Okay, so Anand will come back. So in this video we will talk about exercise 13.1. So uh, exercise 13.1 and you want to evaluate the following limits um, basically in this question. So number one, you have the limit of x plus 3 as x tends to as x tends to 3. So of course you know that this is a polynomial, the limit of a polynomial. Um, we said that the limit of f of x, f of x being a polynomial as x tends to a, is equal to f of a, which means that here you have, um, wherever you see basically x, you substitute that with, with uh, basically with uh, 3, because x is tending to 3, so 3 plus 3 is equal to 6. That's, that's number 1. Okay, so question number 2. We have the limit of x minus 22 sevenths as x tends to pi. The number 2, the limit of x minus 22 sevenths as x tends to pi. So x minus 22 sevenths is a, is of course a, um, a function and um, well you can take pi as 22 sevenths of course and then I think the limit would be equal to um, of course pi is not not exactly equal to 22 by 7 that's just a that's just an appro approximation to pi so this would be basically pi minus 22 sevenths for example right okay so that is number two Question number three, we have the limit of pi r squared. The limit of pi r squared as r tends to one. So pi is a constant and r squared, this is just a polynomial of, of second degree and r is tending to one. So you have pi times one raised to the power two, which is equal to pi. So number three is equal to pi. Number four, we have the limit of the limit of four x plus three over over x minus two as x tends to four. This is a rational function, and uh, in rational functions, so basically first you need to evaluate the numerator and denominator substitute a in the numerator and denominator and see what happens there. If you get basically a zero in the denominator then there is all of those cases that we talked about. But 4 minus 2 is equal to 2 so you're not going to get a, a zero so that would be basically um, this would simply be the limit of you can you can think of this as the limit of f of x as x tends to a which is equal to the limit of and assuming that f of x is equal to g of x by h of x h of x not equal to zero not equal to zero which is a rational function and so when you take the limit of f of x, you would have the limit of g of x by h of x as h tends as x tends to a, which is equal to the limit of g of x by the as x tends to a by the limit of h of x as x tends to a, which is equal to g of a over h of a. So that is basically that. So now, uh, if h of a is equal to to zero, then you have a problem, and then you will get zero by zero or something like that. But this is not happening here, because four minus two is equal to two, and sixteen plus three is equal to nineteen. So that's nineteen halves. So there you have no problem there. 
Okay, so the next limit that we have is question number five, which is the limit of x raised to the power 10 plus x raised to the power 5 plus 1 over x minus 1 plus 1 over x, right, x minus 1 as x tends to negative 1. So again, the rational function, if I put x is equal to negative 1 in the denominator, I get a negative 2 here, so it seems that we'll have no problem there. So you have basically negative 1 raised to the power 10 plus uh, negative 1 raised to the power 5 plus 1 plus 1 over negative 1 minus 1 which is equal to basically 1 plus negative 1 plus 1 over negative 2 and this would be 0 so that's negative 1 half that is negative 1 half so these are simple Question number six is uh, the limit of the limit of x plus one raised to the power five. Question number six is the limit of the limit of x plus one raised to the power five minus one over x as x tends to zero. So this is again a rational function and you can see that the denominator goes to zero. And the numerator becomes basically negative one over, uh, it becomes basically one raised to the power five is equal to one, one minus one is equal to zero. So you have zero divided by zero. So, um, you do need to do basically what you can do is that uh, we need to take a common factor out so maybe we can take an x out from the numerator and denominator let's see what happens so you have basically x plus 1 raised to the power 5 minus 1 raised to the power 5 so this becomes basically let me see Okay, so this is this is not that complicated, meaning that uh, what you can do is that basically you can write it you can write this this way, meaning that you can write x plus one. You can substitute that as y. You can set x plus one is equal to y, and if you do that you will get this as an extent as x tends to zero as x as x tends to zero then y tends to y tends to one right and then you can based on this you can write this as the limit of as the limit of y raised to the power five minus one and one i can write it one raised to the power five and x would be basically x would be equal to y minus 1 based on this x would be equal to y minus 1 so y minus 1 as y tends to 1 as y tends to 1 and then that's the same the same thing as we discussed before we said that the limit of the limit of x raised to the power n minus a raised to the power n over x minus a as x tends to a is equal to n times a raised to the power n minus 1. So we had this before. <coughs> Excuse me. 
and therefore you can based on this you can say that you can say that then uh, this is the same thing as n which is 5 times a raised to the power a is equal to 1 raised to the power n minus 1 raised to the power 4 which is equal to 5 so that's an interesting question <coughs> now question number question number 7 Question number seven, we have, we have basically the limit of, the limit of 3x squared minus x minus 10, 3x squared minus x minus 10 over x squared minus 4, as x tends to 2, as x tends to 2, 2 squared 4 minus 4 is equal to 0, so you get the 0 over here, and 3 times x squared minus x minus 10 when x is equal to 2 becomes 3 times 4 minus 2 minus 10 which is equal to 12 minus 12 is equal to 0 so this becomes 0 by 0 now if you want to evaluate this limit you will have to basically do some uh, factorization meaning that you can write meaning that you can write 3x squared minus x minus 10 as uh, basically as uh, 3 times 10 is equal to 30 and that's negative 30 actually and so then 5 times 6 is equal to 30 I can take this as 5 and 6 and then over here the the the, the, the the sum of these two numbers has to be negative 1, so I take this as negative 6. Now 5 times negative 6 is equal to negative 30. Negative 30, which is the number that I have here, 3 times negative 10. And 5 plus negative 6 is equal to negative 1, which is the, which is the number that I have here. So we can use these two numbers in order to factorize this expression. Now, I can write this as 3x squared minus 6x plus 5x minus 10. And then I can write this as, from this, you can take a 3x out and write it as x minus 2. And from this, you can take a 5 out, x minus 2. And this becomes 3x plus 5 times x minus 2. And that is your numerator. So you can write this as the limit of basically 3x plus 5 over x minus 2, I'm sorry, times x minus 2, and x squared minus 4 is the same thing as x squared minus 2 squared, which is equal to a squared minus b squared. a squared minus b squared is a, mi a plus b times a minus b. So you have basically x minus 2 times x plus 2. So this becomes x minus 2 times x plus 2 times x plus 2 and as x tends to 2. Then you can cancel these two out. You can cancel these two out as x is not equal to 2 as x is not equal to 2 I can cancel these two out and so what what remains is basically what remains is um, is the limit of is the limit of 3x plus 5 over x plus 2 as x tends to 2 which is the same thing as now this becomes 4 and this becomes 12 plus 5 is equal to 17 that's 17 fourths I think that is the, the answer there let me see <coughs> 11 fourths I suppose 3 times 6 plus 4 okay sorry 
I made a mistake there. So that's that's basically three times six three times is equal to six. Six plus five is equal to eleven. Eleven divided by four. That's the correct answer. Question number eight. You have the limit of x raised to the power four minus eighty one. The limit of the limit of x raised to the power four minus eighty one over 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 over 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 as x tends to 3 okay so now this limit 3 raised to the power 4 is equal to 81 minus 81 would be 0 and I think if I put 8 3 in the denominator I would get a 0 because 3 squared is equal to 9 18 18 minus 15 would be positive 3 minus 3 would be 0 right so if you do if you factorize the numerator and denominator you would get x raised to the power 4 minus 81 you can write it as x squared whole squared minus 9 squared so that's a squared minus b squared. You can write it as a minus b times a plus b. Meaning that you can write this as x squared um, x squared minus minus 9 times x squared plus 9. x squared minus 9 times x squared plus 9. And x squared minus 9 is again the same story a squared minus b squared you can write this as x squared minus 3 squared so you can write this as x minus 3 times x plus 3 times x squared plus 9 the denominator you can write it as 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 and so if you multiply 2 by negative 3, you'll get negative 6. So negative 6, mm, 2 and 3, for example, would be 2 times 3 is equal, to, is equal to 6. And it has to be negative, so um, it has to be negative, and it has to be, uh, the, 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 the sum of them has to be negative 5, so this doesn't work. So you need to take, for example, 1 and 6. 1 times 6 is equal to 6. And then if I put a negative sign here, I get a negative 6 there. And if I add them together, I'll get a negative 5. And so everything would will really work out for the best. So I write this as 2 times x squared plus x minus 6x. Um, minus 3 which is the same thing as x times 2x which is the same thing as x times x times 2x plus 1 plus uh, or minus basically um, if I take it 3 out here I will get 2x uh, plus 1 right so that's negative 6x negative 3 so that's x minus 3 times 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 2x plus 1 that is your denominator so then i can write this as i can write this as the limit of so the denominator becomes x minus 3 times x plus 3 times x squared plus 9 and then you need to write that the denominator you can write as x minus 3 times 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1 as x tends to 3 now I can of course uh, I can of course um, cancel these out as x is not equal to is not equal to 3 
because if, if x was equal to 3 over here, you would get a 0 over here, and you would get a 0 in the denominator, but x is tending to 3, not, not equal to 3. So then you would get basically 6 times, so, so the whole thing becomes basically, um, becomes um, 3 plus 3 is equal to 6, and 9 plus 9 is equal to 18, times 18, and over here you have 2 times 3 is equal to 6, 6 plus 1 is equal to 7. And that's the same thing as 6 times 18, 17, which is 60, 48, 108 sevenths, which is equal to 108, which is equal to 108 sevenths, which is the correct answer. Okay. That was question number 8. Question number nine is uh, another another limit, which is the limit of the limit of a x plus b over c x plus one as x tends to zero. So as x tends to zero, um, c x plus one tends to zero. So that you'll get the denom b divided by 1, so this would be simply b, I suppose, right? So if you put x is equal to 0 here, these are two polynomials, or in other words, this is a rational function, so you can write basically 0 times times a plus b over basically c times, for example, 0 plus 1, which is equal to, this is b divided by 1, which is equal to b. Simple. Number 10 is the limit of is the limit of z raised to the power 1 thirds minus 1 over z raised to the power 1 sixths minus 1 as z tends to z tends to 1. So here, if z tends to 1, 1 raised to the power 1 third is equal to 1, 1 minus 1 is equal to 0, again 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. But we had basically, we had the limit of, we had the limit of basically, um, we had the limit of x raised to the power n minus a raised to the power n over x minus a as x tends to a. We had this as n times a raised to the power n minus 1, right? So, which means that you, you can write this as, um, you can write this as the limit of z raised to the power, z raised to the power 1 thirds minus 1 raised to the power 1 thirds, z raised to the power 1 sixth minus 1 raised to the power 1 sixth, and uh, and then you need to make some arrangements here. Z raised z tending to one. If I divide the numerator by z minus one and divide the denominator by z minus one, it's very simple. So. I can write limit of basically z raised to the power one thirds minus one raised to the power one thirds over z minus one over z minus one over z raised to the power one sixth minus one raised to the power one sixth over z minus one. Right? So I can write it this way as z tends to as z tends to 1 and then i can write this as the limit of as the limit of z raised to the power 1 thirds minus 1 raised to the power 1 thirds over z minus 1 as z tends to 1 over the limit of z tends to 1 of z raised to the power 1 sixth minus 1 raised to the power 1 6 over z minus 1 
and so this is going to be equal to base okay so here now I did make a mistake so I have to go back a little bit but then once you basically once you have this step then you can write this as basically we said that the limit of uh, we said that the limit of basically x raised to the power n minus a raised to the power n over x minus a as x tends as x tends to a is equal to n times a raised to the power n minus one, right? So based on this, you can here write over here write basically the limit of this becomes uh, basically one third times one raised to some power, for example, one third minus minus one, for example. And then this you can write as one six times one raised to the power, for example, one six minus minus one. And so one raised to any power would be one. So this would be, and, and again, one raised to any power would be one. So you have one third over one six, which is the same thing as one third times six, which is six thirds, which is equal to two, right? Now, alternatively, you can also solve this problem in a different way, meaning that um, meaning that you can write here. You can write what you can do is that, uh, that of course that would be a, a lot simpler. We want to find the limit of basically z raised to the power one third the limit of z raised to the power one third minus minus one minus one over z raised to the power one sixth minus one as x as z tends to one right so so now of course over here as z tends to one the the value of the given function takes the form zero by zero Right. Now what you can do is that you can put z raised to the power z raised to the power one six as x. If you put z raised to the power one six as x, then uh, or equal to x basically or equal to x, then we have then we have basically then z raised to the power one one th one thirds would be um, would be basically z raised to the power one thirds would be equal to um, x raised to the power um, x raised to the power so uh, if z raised basically z raised to the power one six um, if I want to get z raised to the power one thirds from that. Um, I think I have to square it because 2 divided by if I square this I will get z raised to the power 2 6 which is equal to z raised to the power 1 3rd so that means that this is the same thing as x squared if z raised to the power 1 6 is equal to x then then x squared would be 0 raised to the power 1 thirds, right? And moreover, you can say that basically as z tends to as z tends to 1, then x raised x, x tends to 1 because as z tends as z tends to 1, then basically that, that is 1 raised to the power 1 6, which is equal to which is equal to 1, so that, that is basically x tends to 1. Then you can write this as the limit of 0 to the power 1 3rd, which is equal to x squared minus 1, and 1, I can write it as 1 squared, and 0 to the power 1 6 is equal to, we took that as x minus 1, as x tends to 1, and now we can based on the same formula that we had before the limit of x raised to the power n minus a raised to the power n over, over x minus a as x tends to a we can write this as n times a raised to the power n minus 1 
So then we can write this as two times um, basic D one raised to the power basic D one, which is equal to two. So that's another way of doing it. But uh, I don't know. I'm I'm not always very good at seeing basic D all of these things that for example if I put x z is equal to for example to such and such power then I will get this one and that one and so on and so forth so if you if you can do this kind of thing of course it's very good but otherwise the usual way of algebra and all of those things are available always to solve a problem sometimes there is no way you have to do substitution but otherwise whenever whenever that's not necessary you can you can use algebra as well but in those cases then the solution becomes a little bit longer so that was question number 10 now question number 11 we have the limit of the limit of ax squared ax squared plus bx plus c over cx squared plus bx plus a plus bx plus a as x tends to 1 and a plus b plus c a plus b plus c is not equal to 0 is not equal to 0 <coughs> so if x tends to 1 then you have a plus then you have a times basically 1 plus b times 1 plus c so that would be a plus b plus c and again c uh, times 1 plus b times 1 plus a so that would be a plus b plus c and so you would get basically a plus b plus c divided by a plus b plus c numerator and denominator divide them and you will get a 1 so that would be equal to 1 I suppose let me see number 11 is 1 right so number 11 is 1 I don't I don't understand why they give you such simple questions I mean that's not really bad really but well okay question number 12 question number 12 is the limit of is the limit of 1 over x plus 1 over 2 over x plus 2 as x tends to negative 2 So this is of course um, 0 by 0, right? Now this is um, something that for which you need to do substitution, I suppose, because this is because this is x raised to the power negative 1 So here the problem is that if I write this as if I write this as the limit of for example x raised to the power negative 1 plus plus basically 2 raised to the power negative 1 over x plus 2 I would not be able to use as x tends to negative 2 I would really not be able to use that theorem because that theorem says that basically n has to be a positive number as far as I can remember or it basically here it says that n is any rational number if any rational number means negative numbers as well you could probably use that as well 
So in, with that logic, if we are supposed to do that, then you would get, for example, negative 1 raised times negative 2 raised to the power negative 1, for example, um, negative 1, which is equal to negative 1 into negative 2 raised to the power negative 2, which is equal to negative 1 times 1 over negative 2, which is equal to 1 half, something like that. I'm not sure if the answer is correct. No, it seems that this is not... It seems that this is not the way to solve this problem. Okay, so let's, let's see what the solution looks like. So basically, as we, if x tends to negative 2, of course, the, the function takes the, the, the form basically 0 by 0. So, so if, I, if I add these two together, 1 over x plus 1 over 2, I will have 2x over here and x plus 2. And then I will have the and then if I if I have x plus two over two x over x plus two, I'll have x plus two over two x times basically the reciprocal of this, which is one over x plus two, and then you can cancel these two out. You have one over two x, and of course I can cancel these two out because x is not equal to negative two, so we have no problem there. And uh, so I can write this as the limit of 1 over 2x as x tends to negative 2. And that would be equal to 1 over basically negative 4. Okay. Fair enough. Now the next thing that we have is question number... Um, Question number 13, question number 13, which is, uh, which is basically the limit of sine ax, number 13, which is the limit of sine ax, sine ax over bx as x tends to zero. So we said we had a theorem that said that the limit of sine x by x, that the limit of sine x by x as x tends to zero is equal to one. Now, um, I could divide, I could divide the numerator and denominator by ax. So I can write this as the limit of basically sine ax by, by ax and the, the divide the denominator by the same thing bx by, 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 by ax as x tends to 0. And uh, so what happens is that this is the same thing as the limit of the limit of sine ax by ax as x tends to zero over the limit of basically x and x here cancel out. So you have b divided by a as x tends to zero. And so you have, this is equal to one over and that would be b divided by a so that would be a divided by b so number 13 is a divided by b number 14 number 14 you have number 14 you have the limit of sine ax sine ax over sine bx as x tends to zero 
and a and b are not equal to zero okay so if you write this as um, you can write this as basically the limit of the limit of basically sine ax and divide the numerator by ax because you know that the limit of basically sine x by x as x tends to 0 is equal to 1 so if I can use this basically in order to evaluate this limit I can write this as the limit as x tends to 0 of sine ax by ax sine bx by by bx and now I have divided the numerator by ax divided the denominator by bx which means that I have multiplied which means that I have I have multiplied the the, the, the whole fraction by by 1 over uh, basically I have divided by 1 over ax and by by 1 over ax over 1 over bx which is the same thing as 1 over ax times times bx so then that would be b divided by a meaning that I have multiplied this whole fraction by b divided by a so if I if I basically multiply this by a divided by b then a divided by b uh, times b divided by a would be equal to 1 and so nothing has changed in the in the in the whole fraction so and then what I can do is that I can write this as the limit of basically or I can take this a by b out I can take this a by b out a divided by b times the limit of limit of x extends to 0 of sine ax by ax by sine bx by bx as x tends to 0 which is the same thing as basically a divided by b times the limit of times the limit of sine ax by ax as x tends to 0 divided by the limit of sine sine bx sine bx by bx as x tends to 0 right now this is equal to 1 this is equal to 1 and so you will be left with a divided by b you will be left with they, uh, they you will be left with a divided by b so that was number that was number 14 now question number 15 we have the limit of Question number 15, we have the limit of sine pi by pi minus x divided by pi, divi pi times pi minus x as x tends to as x tends to pi. So um, as x tends to pi so you know that this the, 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 the limit of basically sine x by x as x tends to 0 is equal to 1 which means that if I put if I put x pi minus x as as y for example if I put pi minus x as y then I would have basically sine y by 
by pi times y and then as as x tends to pi x tends to pi then y tends to uh, y tends to zero as x tends to pi y tends to zero so I'm going to write this as the limit of sine pi minus x is equal to y so that is sine y times pi times pi times basically pi minus six is equal to y as as y tends to zero as y tends to zero that is one divided by pi one divided by pi I can take out so I can write it as one divided by pi times the limit of sine pi sine y divided by y as x tends to zero which is equal to so this becomes one so you will be left with one divided by pi one divided by pi question number 16 you have um, the limit of cos x over pi minus x as x tends to zero Question number 16, you have the limit of the limit of cos x over pi minus x as x tends to zero. So as x tends to zero, this becomes pi and this becomes uh, basically cos zero is equal to one, one over pi, I suppose. There is, it's, it's very simple. So it's not zero by zero or anything. So as x tends to zero, this becomes cos of zero, which is equal to one cos zero over one over pi minus pi minus zero, which is equal to one over pi, and that is the limit. Question number 17. 